So why do we do work on around relationships is so we can experience hopefully ecstatic, um, beautiful connections with other people and avoid heartbreak. And it's also, uh, I think, about being seen in and not trapped in relationships. You know, I mean, I, I think there's always times where you feel uh, trapped in a relationship. I, I certainly um, get that coming up sometimes and you know, I'm like, oh yeah, I'd, I'd like to be single again and all of that kind of stuff. Um, so that, I think that's, there's, there's a, a part of relationships that's always going to be like that. Um, but it, you know, it, it, it doesn't want to be trapped like you're in, a, in prison or something like that or something awful. Um, when you get feelings like that coming up, it's, it's just a good time to, I don't know, maybe go out for a cycle or something like that and give yourself some space. Um, and uh, the work I'm doing here is also about being more present in the moment so that we're not uh, replaying um, histor historical uh, experiences. So we're actually having our relationship in real time and, and we're, not, uh, we're not in patterns, basically, old patterns of behavior. And this kind of work also helps people to have really deep, authentic relationships. And this is also a journey of discovery. Um, that's certainly what I found in relationships. Uh, I, I, it, it's like you, you, you get things out of people about Oh yeah, uh, relationships then can also be uh, a, a voyage of discovery. Um, this is how it's been for me. So um, I really get things from p the people I connect with and uh, learn things from them. Um, so I'm always sort of growing in relationships uh, as long as I'm you know, doing this work and observing things and being present. And also, and this is, this is something that uh, really gets me off, um, by being better at having relationships, it, it sort of has a, a society-wide effect. Um, and, and I think it makes the world a better place, which I, I think is just beautiful. So what exactly is intimacy? Well, this is, these are some ideas that I've had about it. Um, it's about having knowledge of, of another person. And you can think of it as... Uh, as seeing into other people, um, uh, hence the sort of uh, intimacy idea. And intimacy is really all about communication, and it's a, it's about sharing facts. You know, obviously, to be intimate with somebody, like physically, you need to be naked and see what their body is like. So that's that's facts, and exactly the same stuff uh, all around the mind as well. Uh, intimacy also requires communicating uh, personal information. You know, obviously, you have to share who you are, what you feel, what, um, what your past is. You have to share that with the person you want to be intimate with. And, of course, there comes vulnerability with that. Uh, you know, it, it obviously depends what kind of a person you're with um, as to whether that being vulnerable is safe or not. So being vulnerable requires trust. And well, how do you know whether to trust somebody? Well, you need to see consistent, safe behavior. So before you get really intimate with somebody, um, it's, a, it's a great idea to, to develop trust. It's kind of obvious. Um, but not everybody does it. So if we can't trust, we can't really be intimate. And what happens to us, what happens um, as children, we start off being fully open and expressive. So, I mean, I, I'm sure some of you got children. I, I know some of you have. And uh, kids don't, don't start life uh, being quiet. Okay, we're getting some problems here. Um, so children are very open and expressive, but unfortunately, because of adverse childhood experiences, we learn that we can't trust people. And sometimes those uh, people tell us that we're bad in some way or other. Uh, so we learn 
uh, that we're not okay. And also we may learn from our, our carers or, or peers that what we wanted to do doesn't matter. So we may have been sort of, you know, ferried off to school or something like that. Um, we may have had an interest in a particular activity and we were discouraged to do it. So these adverse childhood experiences can lead us to learn to erase parts of ourselves uh, and, and suppress our uh, sort of natural character. And the result of this suppression is that we end up uh, struggling to do intimacy. And if we don't deal with this inability to do intimacy, then we get these sort of false relationships. And a false relationship, you know, it can be, it can still be a, a happy relationship. You might still enjoy being in such a relationship. Um, but the intimacy isn't really there. And I, I think when that happens over a long time, I mean, certainly for me, I think I, I would feel um, very stuck and would, would be in that... Uh, uh, being trapped in the relationship situation. So we really need to do things to help break down these barriers to intimacy uh, so as not to have these sort of faux relationships. So there's a little exercise here. Um, I invite you to, to grab pen and paper if you want to. Uh, grab a notepad. And there's three questions here, and I've just tried to clarify each one. Um, the first one is, were there people you couldn't trust? So this is, this is really at any time in your past, uh, particularly childhood. Uh, was there somebody that caused you harm? So that they, they were actively uh, criticizing you, shaming you, uh, putting you down. Well, it could, have, it could have been physical. They could have hit you. Or it could be neglectful as well. Perhaps they didn't... Um, you know, perhaps your parents didn't uh, provide you with uh, you know, new clothes or um, pocket money or, or something like that. Uh, so you felt neglected. So, and, you know, you can just answer to yes to, or no to that question if you like, or... You can even fill out some details and, and uh, be expansive on that topic. And the second question was something about you made bad. So perhaps there was some aspect of you or your personality uh, that was a, a sort of focus for shaming or insulting or belittling. And again, you can just answer yes to that, or if you prefer, you can fill something out and, and uh, expand on it. And then the third question, were your wishes denied or minimized? So perhaps there was something that you really liked doing or something that you really wanted to do, uh, but it was sort of de-emphasized. And again, you can just answer yes or no to that. Or you can you could fill out and, and do a bit a bit more. So I'm just going to give another ten seconds for that, and of course you can always return to this later. Right. So if you've you've had some of those experiences from the previous slide, you may have been affected in certain ways. You may find that you're saying yes instead of no sometimes, or you say no instead of yes. You could also experience some sort of distortion to your, to your ego. So you might sort of blame yourself for things that you didn't actually do. Or you might actually go the other way and be sort of e egoic and, and not accept uh, responsibility for things and, and uh, may think that uh, you're more successful or better than you, you really are kind of thing. Uh, you may be finding it hard to set boundaries. 
you may even find it hard to accept praise. So you might actually be really good at something. And when people say, hey, you're good at that, or they say, oh, yeah, you're, you've are you got really nice legs or something like that, you may find that really difficult to accept that praise. And what it is is that we've sort of built up this uh, uh, scar or, or damage from our experience, and we've developed various coping mechanisms, which are... Uh, probably about damage limitation. So they were about us coping with our situation uh, that we had before. Now, the, the problem is when these uh, muscles that we've developed for damage limitation, these sort of psychic muscles, uh, these responses, these uh, tapes that we play, when we bring those into our future, uh, they can be impediments to intimacy, so they can actually block us from getting what we need. So, how can we start to open up? Well, really, we have to look at those three factors uh, that I mentioned before about uh, not uh, not finding people we can trust, and uh, not being okay, and not being accepted. So. We can start to open up when we experience the opposite, uh, usually. Uh, some people, of course, will be so traumatized by the damage that they, they find it difficult then to, to move into being more intimate, but we're assuming here that things aren't so bad. How can you open up? Well, obviously, you need to find people you can trust. Uh, these are people that you're safe uh, being vulnerable with, so you're, you're able to share uh, your uh, personal experiences uh, with people and they these people are not going to uh, use that knowledge of you in a negative way uh, they're not going to exploit you or abuse you or uh, criticize you and, and so forth <laughs> and you also need to know that you're okay and some of this is is, is self-acceptance work um, and, and acceptance is, is not necessarily about liking every part of yourself or everything about you, but it's about acknowledging that that part of you is there uh, rather than uh, not accepting the parts of yourself um, that are present and, and sort of pretending that uh, these different uh, drives that you have, these desires, emotions, uh, are not present because you're uncomfortable with them. And it's the same uh, with other people around you. They need to be able to accept all these parts of you. And there is a bit of a, a sort of a, um, a caveat to this. Uh, so, for example, uh, there may be parts of you um, that uh, maybe in the past... Um, you did something bad, uh, I don't know, you, you defrauded somebody or you, you hurt somebody physically or you were a thief or something like that. Um, and while it's important, again, to accept that, that uh, those are parts um, of the self, um, you, you may not like them. So, you know, and, uh, and, you know, when you share things like that, uh, th things that you may have done that are, are morally wrong, um, it, again, you know, people, uh, if, if you're going to get intimate with them, they need to know this stuff, um, but they need to be able to accept it. Um, but just be clear that, um, you, you know, it's, they, don't, uh, they don't necessarily have to like it. And I think that's just, that's just reality. And finally, our... Um, other sort of ingredient for having a successful and, and developing intimate relationship is that our uh, partner or partners accept that what we want matters. So our, our desires for uh, experiences in life uh, are important and our, our lovers need to support, support us. Um, around uh, meeting uh, our needs and, and wants and, and not be judgmental or uh, critical. And, and again, uh, like the previous one, kind of assuming that uh, we're, our, our actions, that our desires and emotions are actually moral and you know, not, not harming other people and so forth. 
so um, yeah, there we have a sort of a three-point formula, um, which is is a it's a it's a great set of rules um, about who you let into your life, or at least who you who you allow yourself to be intimate with. <coughs> and obviously, you know, you can you can have lots of other rules, like um, you know, I like people with dark hair. I like people who are into I don't know sports cars, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Yeah, those are all preferences. Um, and that's great. It's a good idea to have that kind of detail on, on what you want in your life, in, in other people. Um, but uh, this sort of basic three-point formula is a, is, a, is a great starting place for uh, absolute uh, must-haves, I think. Okay, so we have another exercise now. Um, we're going to sort of be a bit more practical and, and personal with this. So you might want to get your notepads and ask uh, yourself, what are you hiding now and why? So if you just sort of take a catalogue of your past, your thoughts, desires, and emotions, what have, what have you been hiding? And then ask yourself the questions, why do you hide them? Is it shame? Is it fear? Is it doubt? Is there some kind of power that you get from hiding parts of yourself? Do you think you're in a better position by not being honest about things? And what would it mean if you started to tell people about yourself? How would it be to, to reveal uh, these things that you're holding back? What would the risks be? What would the benefits be? And what are the likely consequences if you share these uh, secrets that you have with somebody? What could happen? Because it's important to know uh, if you're going to be vulnerable with something that's very risky, you know, like maybe a criminal record or something like that. It's important to know that you're safe and, and <coughs> be aware of the consequences. Um, but this is all going to tell you a lot about your relationships. And this is the last slide of the presentation. It's really about the power of truth, and, and truth kind of creates a chain reaction around you. So when you, you, you start to tell, you, you open up and you start to tell people who you are, and you start being vulnerable with, with some of your material, you get an opportunity to see how people react. Of course, that's going to tell you whether these are people that you can be uh, more intimate with. And it's going to bring you clarity as well. You're going to, you're going to see what the reality of your relationships is like. And that, that clarity is going to give you data to make decisions about uh, who, whether you have somebody in your life or not, whether you go deeper with them, and uh, where you're going to take things. And it's also important to know whether the stuff you're hiding is, is because of your past or because of your present. So... <clears throat> Um, if you're hiding stuff because of your past, you know, like the, the bad stuff that happened in your childhood, then basically you're, you're treating uh, the present situation as if you were interacting with the people that you experienced uh, in the bad times. And that's really not fair to you or the other people in your life. Uh, so... Uh, that's that's something to 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 work with, and uh, hopefully to move through. Um, and the other question is: uh, Are you hiding because of your present? So, is is there somebody that's uh, not safe around you, or do you have questions about them? And again, if if it's something in the present, then that's that's really great information. Um, it allows you to get into a dialogue or to think about things and uh, share with people something vulnerable. Um, to see if you can do uh, the problem and develop the relationship. And of course, finally, there's the possibility that you're hiding because you're not ready. 
Um, and you know that's perfectly fine and that can be quite revealing as well you know if you say to somebody well um, you know I'm not you, you've asked me let's say somebody asked about your, your previous sex life and um, you've had sex with loads of people and they, they say oh how many people have you had sex with and it's you know it's perfectly okay to say well I'm not not really ready to share that yet you know and then that can create another dialogue about well uh, well, why is that? Um, well, you know, I don't really trust you with that yet. And then they can say, well, why don't you trust me? And then you can, you know, you, from that you can build in and, and process in real time. Yeah, Chris has mentioned uh, like men's groups. Um, I'm in a men's group. And we have like a whole framework of of creating a safe space for people to share uh deep deep personal problems if they want to well any kind of problem or any issue that comes up uh, most people aren't, aren't in that circle um and it's a great thing to get into and of course you're quite unlikely to meet other people who have had those uh, kind of experiences and have that kind of support um, so it's, it's great to have um, these skills and be able to work with people who don't necessarily have, have quite the same level of attainment, uh, but preferably you want to find equals. Um, Liz is asking um, the question about how many people have you slept with? And uh, before I got cut out, um, yeah, what I was saying is uh, this, this is quite a common topic Um, yeah, it's an opportunity. I mean, there's a question, of course, why, why do you want to know that? Um, I think it's a very reasonable question, and I think it's perfectly reasonable to answer the question, how many people have you slept with? Uh, I think it's an important indicator of your past behavior, and as people say, you know, past predicts future. Um, and if it doesn't, then there's a conversation to be had around that. Um, you know, what's changed? Uh, what do you do now? What's your recent behavior been? Um, so, um, there's just a lot that you can get out of that. If you, you could, for example, say you're not ready to share, then that informs you, well, I, this is person I don't actually trust yet. Um, and then that can bring, bring out a whole conversation of, well, why don't I trust this person? And you can ask, or you can point out and say, well, no, I don't trust you yet to share that information with and then the, the other person can say, well, why don't you trust me? Um, so that was it really. Um, it, it's just, a, again, you know, it's a, a vulnerable piece of information that's going to show you the truth about your, your relationship with this person and it's going to give you an opportunity to, to more, move forwards potentially and uh, move through the issue and, and learn, learn something about each other as well. Uh, or it could be that the, the person is, is you're not trustworthy yet and you need to get around uh, into building that trust and, and focus on on those three uh, ideas I gave in that formula about um, you know being being able to safely share things. So you could just say, well, hey, let's let's wait a little while. I'll I'll tell you when I feel safe. Let's just see how things go. Um, and you build up the safety. You build up the trust. You see the other person supporting you, and you you see that they're accepting you. And then then maybe, hey, now I can answer that question. And that's also a great way of, of um, uh, discovering how good you are with your boundaries with this person so you can get clearer around um, your own sort of, of ability to deal or cope with this person and their energy. But, you know, hopefully it would all be very easy. Uh, any more questions?